Selectors are a fundamental part of CSS, and without them, it's impossible to style anything. So let's begin. As I mentioned in previous videos, a selector is the first part of a style rule in CSS. By using selectors, you can very flexibly and accurately choose which elements on your page you would like your styling to be applied to. Now, admittedly, selectors aren't the most exciting aspect of CSS, but they are perhaps the most important. By possessing a keen understanding of how to use selectors, especially in combination with one another, you'll dramatically elevate your understanding of CSS and how different rules interact with one another. This understanding becomes even more valuable when attempting to debug your code and find errors. Now, as you can see here, I have the same basic page that we've been working with, and switching over to my text editor, here's the exact same HTML that we've been using, and I'm just going to switch over to my style sheet here. And the first selector I'm going to show you is called the universal selector. So let's try it out. So I'm just going to type star and open my curly braces and then type out a few properties with some values here. And when I switch back to the browser and refresh the page, you can see that we've inverted the colors or the contrast of the entire page. So let's go back to the text editor. This selector, which is sometimes referred to as the star selector, will select every single element on your entire page and apply the specified CSS properties to it. In this CSS rule, I've set the text color to white and the background color to black. Because we're applying this to every element on the entire page, it inverts the contrast of the whole page. Now, in practice, you almost never want to use the universal selector in this fashion. Rather, the universal selector is typically used in combination with other selectors. We'll get into that in a minute. The next selector that I want to show you, you probably have already seen by now. So I'm just going to change the universal selector to our p tag, and when I switch back to the browser and refresh, you can see that all of our paragraphs now have this inverted contrast. So let's switch back to the text editor. This is what's called a type selector. A type selector will select any particular type of element. In this example, I'm selecting every p tag or paragraph tag on our page. Let's try out another type selector. So I'm just going to change our P to a H2. And when I switch back to the browser and refresh, you can see that our second level headlines are now inverted. So let's switch back. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can combine selectors together. Before we do this, we need to add a bit of markup to our page so that we have something to select. I'm going to use a tag that I haven't shown you yet called the span tag. So just switching over to my HTML, I'm going to use the span tag inside of a second level header. And I'm also going to use it inside of our paragraph. Just like that. The span tag doesn't have any obvious effects right away, so if I were to refresh the page now, you wouldn't see anything different. But the span tag is useful when you need to apply attributes or CSS styling to a small subset of text. So let's say that I wanted to style any span tags that sit inside of a paragraph, but not span tags that are inside of our second level headers. I've added spans inside of both, but I need to target just one of them. So let's switch back to our CSS. Now to do this, I couldn't just say span and use a type selector like this, because that would select every span tag on the page. Instead, we need to use what's called a descendant selector. So let's try it. So I'm going to just type P to select all of our paragraphs and then span to select the span tags inside of our paragraphs. So when I switch back to the browser and refresh, you can see that the span tag that's inside of our paragraph is now inverted. HTML is structured like a tree of nodes. When you create a descendant selector, you start at a large branch and work your way down. 
So we're starting at the paragraph and working our way down to the span. Let's switch over to the CSS. In this case, we've selected all of the paragraphs on the page, but then as we move left to right, we narrow down that selection to just the span tags that are inside of the paragraphs. So let's do the same thing using an H2. So instead of a paragraph, I'll do a second level headline. And when I switch back to the browser and refresh, you can see that the span tag that's inside of our second level header is now inverted. Now I won't show you in this video, but you can actually continue adding type selectors to your descendant selector. Let me switch over to the HTML so I can show you what I'm talking about. So for example, you could select a UL tag and then work your way down to the LI tags and then go even further down to the anchor tags and so on. You're not just limited to the two type selectors that I've used here. Now I'm going to show you two more selectors that are related but different. First is the ID selector. You can add an ID attribute to any element on your page and then in your CSS you can select that exact same element by its ID. So let's go into the markup and add an ID and then select it. So to this H2 here I'm just going to add an ID attribute and I'm going to name it important headline. Now that we have an ID on the page, we can select that element by itself. To do this, we need to use the name of the ID preceded by a hash. So let's just delete what we have here and type hash important headline. And when we switch back to the browser and refresh, you can see that just this second level headline is inverted. Finally, I'm going to show you a class selector. Now at first glance, this will look extremely similar to an ID selector, but I'll type it out and then explain the differences. So switching back to the text editor, we're going to go back into the markup and change ID to say class. And then in the style sheet, we're going to change the hash to a dot. And when we switch back to our browser and refresh, you can see that it looks exactly the same and it appears to have had the same effect. So it looks like we've just changed ID to class and the hash symbol to a dot. So what's the difference? Well, an ID on your page needs to be completely unique. Once you name an ID, it's bad practice to use it anywhere else on your page. IDs should be used for major site components that will only appear once on a page. Classes, on the other hand, can appear as many times as you'd like. A class is good for any set of elements that you would like to have the same set of styling applied to. Now that you know how to select elements on your page, we can begin styling them. In the next video, we'll learn about CSS properties.